happy. We ended up spending, uh, I spent almost those three years for, <laughs> in front of the TV eating haagen ice cream. From her electrifying performances to her iconic style, Diana Ross has captivated audiences for decades. But have you ever wondered just how much wealth the legendary diva has amassed throughout her incredible career? Today, we're taking a deep dive into the luxurious lifestyle and jaw-dropping net worth of the one and only Diana Ross. Get ready to be amazed. Born on March 26, 1944 and standing at 1.64 meters, Diana Ross is a legendary American singer and actress. She's the only artist in history to have number one songs as a solo artist, as a member of a duet, and as a member of a trio group. I sit there and get fat. I refuse. <laughs> so I decided to make the album, and the album is really every song came from my heart. Now let's take a look at her hobbies and interests. She has a Labrador retriever named Spinny. She wears stylish designer clothes that cost thousands of dollars. She's an art collector, and her collection is worth millions of dollars. In 2005, Ross was featured as an honored guest at Oprah Winfrey's Legends Ball Weekend, a three-day celebration honoring 25 African-American women in art, entertainment, and civil rights. She's widely known to be a very private lady. Her idol was Etta James. Her favorite color is blue. A lot of things happened during those years. Uh, a lot of sadness. But if you took the time, you really could look and see what is valuable and what's important. Now let's take a look at how she's getting on with her friends and family. Ross has been married twice and has five children. She began dating Motown CEO Barry Gordy in 1965, and together they share a daughter. Rhonda Suzanne Silverstein. However, Gordy did not help raise Rhonda, as two months into her pregnancy, Ross actually married music executive Robert Ellis Silverstein in 1971. Ross went on to have two daughters with Silverstein, Tracy Joy and Chudney Lane. After Ross and Silverstein divorced in 1977, she moved to New York City. Subsequently, Ross dated KISS guitarist and singer Gene Simmons from 1980 to 1983. She met Norwegian shipping magnate Arne Ness Jr. in 1985, and they married the following year. Together, they had two sons, Ross Arne and Evan Olav Ross. After reports that Nas had fathered another child with a woman in Norway, Ross and Nas divorced in 2000. Nas tragically fell to his death in 2004 in a mountain climbing accident in South Africa. Ross has seven grandchildren. She was the second of six children born to Ernestine and Fred Ross Sr. Her mother named her Diane, but the birth certificate was mistakenly filled out with the name Diana. She is very good friends with Paul McCartney, Chaka Khan, Eric Clapton, Steven Tyler, and Smokey Robinson. During these um, three years, actually 2019, when they locked down everything and we didn't get a chance to tour or go out on the road, we sit like a lady. With that being said, let's discuss how she earns money. Diana Ross's stunning success in the music industry has led her to sell over 75 million albums worldwide, making her one of the best-selling female artists of all time. With an estimated yearly income of $20 million, it's no surprise that her music has been such a hit. Ross's early album releases in the 1970s, including Diana Ross and Everything is Everything, earned her a whopping $700,000 in 1970. Her success continued in 1972, when the soundtrack album for Lady Sings the Blues sold an incredible 2 million copies in the US, earning Ross $2.1 million. Ross's album, Why Do Fools Fall In Love, released in 1981, added another $1.15 million to her bank account. She has a net worth of $250 million. Ever wondered where she lives? Let's find out. Diana Ross sure knows how to live in style. Her impressive property portfolio boasts some seriously luxurious homes. 
One of her most impressive abodes is her sprawling 11-bedroom mansion in Greenwich, Connecticut, which sits on five acres of land and even comes complete with a tennis court. While she did list it for sale in 2007 for a whopping $39.5 million, she later received a refund on her property taxes. Seems like this superstar knows how to get what she wants. But that's not all. She also owns a stunning house in Venice, California, featuring a gourmet kitchen, three bedrooms, and three full bathrooms. And let's not forget about her Los Angeles property, which she snagged for $725,000 in 1996. This spacious 6,143-square-foot home boasts seven bathrooms, five bedrooms, and a luxurious living room, making it the perfect place for Diana to unwind and relax in comfort and style. If you've ever wondered what type of car she drives, here are the rides you'll find in her garage. A 1967 Jaguar E-Type Roadster, a Chrysler 300, a red Dodge truck, a Mercedes-Benz, a Ferrari, a Rolls Royce, If you enjoy our videos, give us a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. Your support means a lot to us. Since we've talked about how Diana spends her money, it's important to learn how she achieved this celebrity status. Before becoming a global superstar, Ross attended Cass Technical High School in downtown Detroit. It was there that she discovered her passion for fashion and initially dreamed of becoming a fashion designer. She took classes on various subjects such as clothing design, millinery, pattern making, and tailoring. At 15, she joined the Primettes, a sister group of the Primes, and caught the attention of Motown Records after winning a talent competition. Although deemed too young, the Primettes persisted, helping with recordings and eventually signing with Motown as the Supremes, with Diana Ross as the lead singer, a true star in the making. The Supremes rose to fame with their first hit, When the Love Light Starts Shining Through His Eyes, which reached number 23 on the Billboard Hot 100 Pop Chart in 1963. Ross was later assigned as the group's lead vocalist when they quickly skyrocketed to success with their number one hit, Where Did Our Love Go, in 1964. The Supremes enjoyed a period of unrivaled success, with 10 number one hit singles between August 1964 and May 1967, making them Motown's most successful vocal act in the 1960s. However, things took a turn when Florence Ballard was fired from the group due to personal issues in 1967. Gordy renamed the group Diana Ross and the Supremes, and Ross began to take on more solo projects. She eventually departed the group in 1970, releasing her solo debut album, Diana Ross, in the same year. Her successful solo career has since spanned over 20 studio albums, as well as live and soundtrack albums. In May 2022, Ross released her latest single, Turn Up the Sunshine. That's all for today's video, and thanks for watching it. 
But don't stop here. There's more where that came from. Check out our other videos for more great content.